What's up? It's Tom. It appears Major League Baseball will return in 2020. However, there's going to be a lot of things different than usual. Let's try to touch on some of those topics, give just a general overview of some of these changes. I'm sure you've heard by now we're going to be getting a 60-game season is what the plan is. I will kind of preface that by saying this is all fluid. Obviously, situations are changing uh you know even things state to state are changing all the time so uh, this is the current plan that the mlb has today if this plan continues on we'll see but right now spring training 2.0 summer training training camp whatever you want to call it is set to begin on wednesday this coming wednesday uh, teams are getting back together and it sounds like opening day will either be the 23rd or the 24th of july so I'm going to talk about some of these topics and then throw the twin spin on there because, of course, this is a Twins channel. 60-game uh, season, that seems pretty advantageous for the Twins, in my opinion. If you think about it, uh, especially if you think about their pitching rotation, uh, the two main guys in the pitching rotation who have been much better in a shorter burst, I suppose you'd say, maybe like the first 180 innings of their seasons, are Jose Brios and now Kenta Maeda. Uh, the Brios... That's been pretty well detailed that he's had second-half struggles for most of his career. Uh, Maeda, he might not be as familiar to Twins fans, but he has a similar uh, situation going on. Uh, so that's good. And then also on top of that, Rich Hill is healthy, or at least healthier than he was you know, back in April when the season was supposed to start. So that's obviously a huge boost to the Twins if they can get Rich Hill for 100% of their games. Uh, that turns his signing into an even better signing. On the flip side, Michael Pineda is going to be serving the same suspension as he would have, so he's going to miss a higher percentage of the season. Um, you know, Hopefully that just means he's real fresh when he comes back. So 60 games, how is that going to break down? How is the schedule going to work? Man, I don't know if it could have worked any better for the Twins, to be honest with you. It's going to be 40 games of that 60 are going to be against AL Central opponents, so they're going to play the four division rivals 10 times each. I mean, if you get a third of your schedule is going to be against the Tigers and the Royals, that is a great situation to have. Outside of the AL Central, the, the Twins are only going to play the NL Central. So the other 20 games are going to come against the NL Central. Lots of competitive teams there, uh, you know, not really uh, throwing shade on the NL Central. But it is a fact. Jeremy Frank calculated that the Twins have the easiest schedule of all teams in baseball based on 2019 records. So... Uh, I mean, we can't complain about that. The actual schedule itself has not been released yet, so details are coming soon. Um, and Matthew Taylor at Twins Daily, he took a closer look at that schedule. I'll provide a link down in the description if you want to go ahead and read that. Well, how about the rosters? How about the players? Well, each team right now is having to designate a 60-player pool. And out of that group... There's a lot of weird rules tied to that, and that 60-player pool has to get uh, announced tomorrow afternoon. Now, there can be changes to that pool, uh, but let's get into some of the details on how that works. Again, the deadline will be June 28th at 3 p.m. for teams to set this 60-player pool. No other players outside of this pool are allowed to participate in camp. So it's going to be really interesting to see how the Twins decide to build up this pool. Dan Hayes of The Athletic already reported that we're going to likely see prospects Royce Lewis, Alex Kirilov, Trevor Larnick on that player pool. So I'm sure there'll be a bunch more uh, kind of exciting prospects that weren't on the 40-man roster. Uh, it'll be interesting to see. Matthew Trueblood of Twins Daily, he wrote a piece kind of speculating on what the composition of that 60-player pool might be for the Twins. Again, I'll leave a description for that down in the uh, description. But going a step further, what about the active rosters, rosters for games? Well, we were already going to be bumped up to 26-man rosters from 25 this year. That was already in the works before any of the COVID stuff happened. They're going to start the season for the first two weeks with a 30-man roster. And Ted over at Twins Daily gave his projections of who he thinks is going to be on that 30-man opening day roster. Again, link in the description. Uh, it's just a lot of information to consume in, in one quick video like this. So if you're looking for an extra layer, I'm going to put a bunch of information down in that description. But after the two weeks from the 30-man, it'll drop to a 28-man roster. And then a couple weeks after that, it'll go to that 26-man that it was going to be originally. However, when teams are on the road, they're going to bring a three-man taxi squad with them. So if they need to make any transactions during their road trips, 
they have these three guys as backups. Kind of an interesting situation. One of the three men will have to be a catcher, uh, so that's interesting. I suspect most teams will bring then a catcher, a starting pitcher, and a relief pitcher. That's what I would guess most teams would do because, I mean, you're most likely going to be concerned about not having enough pitching, if anything. Back to the twin spin on this. I think there's so many of these rules that are beneficial to the Twins, but it really speaks to the depth that the team has built. You know, if you think about it now, that especially that Rich Hill's going to be starting the rotation, there's not room for the Dobnaks, for the Smeltzers, for the Lewis Thorpes. Uh, this bullpen's already really deep with, you know, Rogers and May and Duffy and Clippard and Romo and, uh, I mean, I'm sure I'm forgetting some of the established guys, but uh, so this team is already really set up for a, a lot of depth. Uh, there really isn't any questions among the starting lineup. Marwan Gonzalez, once again, is like the 10th man. Ray Adrianza is there, too. You got La Tortuga. Uh, this team is really well set up uh, in, order, in terms of expanding its roster. Another thing that's going to be different with this shortened season is the trade deadline is going to be bumped back a month. The trade deadline will be August 31st. And an interesting wrinkle added in there is only players on the 60-man player pools are allowed to be traded. However, players can be added and removed from the player pools. So, you know, if you were to strike up a deal with a team and they want a certain prospect that's not in your 60-man pool, you can add that player and trade him at that time. The one thing that's an interesting, it's going to add some interesting strategy, is that once you remove a player from your 60-man player pool, you cannot add that player back to your pool. Uh, so it's not like you can just kind of freely manage that 60-man uh, player pool and move guys back and forth on and off of it. Once you've taken a guy off that pool, he is no longer available to be used the whole rest of the season. Kind of the same line of thinking here in terms of the Twins. This is a very deep organization right now. That's going to benefit them. Now to one rule that I really don't like at all. And mainly because this rule has the biggest impact on how the actual games will be played extra innings they're going to use the rule that they recently adopted in the minor leagues and start extra innings with a runner on second base um, i understood this change for the minor leagues uh, for a lot of reasons you know if you think about it most of the minor leagues guys are having to go through really long bus trips and you know having to get on a bus after a 15 inning game or whatever uh, not ideal and, I mean, in the minors, let's be honest, it's just as much about development as it is anything. It's not the competition, the wins and losses. Yes, everybody in the minor leagues wants to win every game they play. I'm not trying to say that it's not competitive, but it's not the utmost primary uh, thing that they're up to there. So I, uh, I was fine with it at the minor leagues. I'm a little bit at a loss as to why this was necessary for the major leagues. Is this... So I'm, I'm just failing to see how this could be like a safety precaution or I, I just don't get the benefit of doing this. Um, I almost would rather have them just say we'll play to 11, 12 innings and call it a tie if it's not over instead of basically changing the rules of baseball uh, to get these games completed. I'm just, there's no indication that that's going to be a rule that's going to continue on after this year. I really hope it doesn't. I do not like that at all. Uh, as a rule, implemented at the highest level of baseball, Major League Baseball, I just, no, no. And then the last thing that was changed, we've already seen this happen, the uh, 2020 MLB draft was slashed from 40 rounds to 5. Uh, and I didn't really get a chance to talk about that. I've been kind of burnt out on, on Major League Baseball a bit. Just all the, the negotiations and the proposals got so ridiculous and it took so long and both sides just messed everything all up and looked horrible i got a little burnt out uh i've been watching a lot of kbo which has been fun they have a twins team there the lg twins uh, so that's how i've been kind of getting my baseball fix uh, but the draft you know the twins had a later pick they picked 27th overall they also had to forfeit two picks in this five round draft uh even uh, because they traded away a slot that would have been sandwiched in between the second and third round uh, to the Dodgers in the Kenta Maeda trade, and then they had to surrender their third-round pick when they signed Josh Donaldson to that deal. So they only had four picks in this draft. You know, given the Twins had so few picks and picks picked late, uh, they ended up with one of the least inspiring classes, to be honest, um, as a group. But I think there's plenty to like about the four guys that they did draft. 
Um, first two picks, they went pretty safe. They took really good college hitters from big programs, uh, Aaron Sabato of North Carolina and Alaric Solare of Tennessee. Uh, those guys both put up big numbers uh, at the dish for those programs. Uh, safe bets. And then after those two picks, the Twins had to wait nearly 70 selections for their next pick, uh, which was crazy. And they shifted their their kind of focus from these college guys that were a little bit older, a little bit more finished products to they, they went and grabbed a couple high school guys that seemed really interesting. Uh, Mark Araya, a pitcher from Laredo, Texas, and Kalai Rosario, an outfielder from Hawaii. Uh, Rosario isn't signed yet, so I'm assuming that they're going to get that deal done. I don't think they would have drafted him if they didn't feel like they were going to sign him. Raya is signed. Uh, so those are guys uh, adding to the system. Of course, it's looking pretty likely that we're not going to get a minor league season in 2020, unfortunately, but uh, adding some talent that night, Andrew Thayer's. Uh, he provided a ton of coverage for us at Twins Daily. I'll provide some more links in the description again. Uh, but this video here was just sort of to catch you up on all these new things in 2020, if in case you missed some of these rule changes. I'm probably going to do another video on some of the really coronavirus-specific rules and, you know, what happens if a player tests positive, how, what happens if a bunch of players do, uh, maybe my thoughts on how this is all going to go. Um, didn't really want to get into that quite yet. We'll see how this gets going. And there's just a lot to consume here <laughs> with all these new rules. It's a lot going on. So, uh, thanks for checking this out. If you have questions, please put them down in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them. Hopefully some other people from the community here, if they see them, they can chip in too. Again, a lot going on, a lot of new stuff, a lot to talk about for the first time in a long time. Thanks for watching.